They've done it. Denmark have won Group D. The knockout stage is when the tournament really gets down to business. With the field whittled down to eight nations, the competition heats up as the top teams battle to get to finals day. And it was nothing short of drama, excitement, and roller coaster emotions for Denmark. Carrying an injury, Mads Pila Kolding was rested in the quarterfinal against Japan. His absence put a further strain on the double squad as they were already without Carsten Mogensen. Players had to be swapped, and the two remaining best doubles players, Mads Conrad Peterson and Matthias Bo, were paired up. I've, I've been on the national centre for six years, and maybe for one hour or something we played, so uh, that's not a lot. It was just to try our, our best, and we, we knew that in the Thomas Cup everything can happen. Much rather play than, than be on the outside, standing in, in amongst the crowd and not being able to to do anything but, but cheer. So, yeah, not a, not a great feeling. In a tight contest, the Japanese men lost out to Denmark in the deciding third singles match. Shockingly, favorites China also fell at the quarterfinal stage. Korea stunned the hosts 3-1 and denied the Chinese from reaching a semi-final since their debut in 1981. Obviously, China losing made us aware that there was a better chance uh, of winning, but we had so much focus on playing Malaysia the next day. We were yeah, just over the moon being in the semi-final and having secured a medal for Denmark because the last time we played Thomas Cup, we lost to Malaysia in the quarterfinal and uh, almost the entire team was also playing two years uh, earlier. So we just kind of wanted to get revenge. An understrength Danish side faced five time Thomas Cup champions Malaysia in the semi final. Kolding was still unfit to play, and with Jorgensen struggling with injury, the singles ace was dropped from the lineup. Lee Chong Wei put Malaysia on the winning path after grinding down European champion Axelsen, and first doubles Govi Shem and Tan Wee Kyung doubled the lead when they saw off scratch pair Bo and Conrad Peterson. We didn't really hope to be down too low. We were hoping for yeah, one all after the first two matches. So obviously there was a lot of pressure uh, on my shoulders. I was actually quite nervous, uh, which is also quite clear to see if you watch the match. I start with a flick serve that's uh, almost uh, one meter out, I think. The nerves, quite obvious for Wittinghus. So I didn't really control my nerves in the, in the beginning, but I was also uh, extremely aware of my tactics. I, I knew exactly what I had to do. So I tried to do, kind of just laugh it off and uh, focus back on, uh, on the tactics and the, the game plan I had decided to, uh, to play with my, uh, with my coach. Although Iskander Zulkarnin Zanudin got off to a blistering start for Malaysia in the third match, he wasn't quite prepared for the Vittingus. Once the Dane got his nerves under control, the 30-year-old was throwing himself all around the court, producing some outstanding defensive badminton to thwart Iskander's big shots. The pattern shifted, and Wittingus wrestled back a point for Denmark. And Wittingus has kept Danish hopes alive. Malaysia still had the edge, and when Ku Kien Kiet and Tan Bun Hyong very comfortably took the opening game over Kim Astrup and Anders Skarup Rasmussen, Malaysia thought they were on course to book their place in the final. We got off to a very good start, uh, leading 6 or 7-2, uh, but from there we went totally black. Uh, we blacked out and we couldn't follow our game plan uh, and we lost uh, the first set uh, pretty huge. Like, I remember Mass, Mass calling coming in and said, we need you guys in there, we really need to shout and support these guys. So 
just drop whatever you got in your hands and, and let's do it. And then, then I can just remember and going in and just full, full throttle and just shouting all we could. And then suddenly everything just turned around from that one set down for Kiman on us. And then, then they start, really started playing and, uh, and there was no looking back from that point. We, we fought our way back in, into the match and made it uh, very physical hard for, for the Malaysians. And with a lot of discipline, we, we managed to, to win the match and give uh, Emil a chance to, to close the. So it was down to the fifth and deciding match in the Thomas Cup semi-final. And Chong Wei Feng's experience was expected to count against the relatively unknown youngster, Emil Holst. I was, I was very nervous when I walked on the court, but also before the match. Uh, me and Kenneth has talked the day before and also on the day that I should prepare in my head that I should play, no matter what the situation will be in the team match. And we were behind 2-0 uh, against Malaysia. And still I was, I was thinking and hoping that we could come back and then I, I should play the deciding match. So all the time I was ready uh, to play. We knew we had a good chance because Emil likes these situations with a lot of pressure and a lot of attention. So it's it's uh, we, we knew it, it was uh, it was uh, not impossible. Um, but you also never know in the fifth match, and we also were struggling to get to the fifth match. And uh, but in the lineup, it was it was not that difficult because Jan was unable to play and uh, Emil was the last single player. So, uh, but that was also why we brought him because we know he can rise to the occasion, and uh, he definitely did in uh, in this match. Oh my goodness, that's extraordinary! I think that was uh, one of the biggest tests in uh, in his career so far, and uh, he just managed to take it so calm and, and he played so well and and, and even though uh, Chong Wei Fing has more experience is, is more experienced than Emil then he just he just he just beat him quite safe and, uh, and I think that was uh, that was a really really good performance. Denmark will contest a ninth Thomas Cup final.